In a world with way too many podcasts comes Jeff Talion and this guy, the podcast to end all podcasts, with some pieced together recording equipment, a couple loosely informed topics, and a coin. These three friends set out to forever change the next hour of your life. Jap Talion and this guy is solely for entertainment purposes. Just Eric and Morgan are not professional researchers, investigators, or gynecologists. Not suitable for children. Hey, welcome to Jap Talion and this guy. I'm Morgan. Hey, I'm Joseph. And Eric caught COVID-19 and has been out for the last two weeks. We actually took a break last week and we're going to go on without him this week. I, th- I think he's got COVID-18. COVID-8, not quite 19, huh? Yeah. But it's close. He did say that he lost his taste. Um, there's and, a joke in there. Yeah, there's definitely a joke in there. But he lost his taste, and <laughs> it hasn't come back yet. So he couldn't he, taste any dicks. <laughs> <laughs> He's in it for the flavor, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit. We love you, Eric. Keep eating dicks. Mm -hmm. Eat dicks. I'm okay with it. I told him now was the perfect time for Annie to shit in his mouth. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes? That's really gross. Well. I think you took it too far. He can't taste it. I don't know. Did I? Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, okay. Um, Joseph, uh, you know what we do here. Uh, tell them what we do. Oh, um, we sit around and talk for a little bit. We annoy each other. Mm -hmm. Eventually we flip a coin or do some kind of random act to decide who talks, who brings the topic up. We usually do that too. Yeah. Are we doing that today? Uh, I don't think so. No, today was supposed to be between you and Eric. And Eric's not here. So uh, we're just going to do your topic. You got a good one for us. I do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, I think it's a good one. Anyways, I'm excited about it. But how was your week this week? It was all right. I started, I don't know if I'm going to be able to clearly explain this without sounding like a tinfoil hat weirdo. Oh, here we go. (laughs) (laughs) I've been thinking a lot about... um, avatars and reality and um you know what is and isn't real stuff like that uh because honestly all of the stuff that i'm supposedly perceiving right now is really just a note just um reactions from my senses going off inside my head there may actually be nothing outside of my head yeah, your brain tells you everything, doesn't it? Or what's outside of my head could be something totally different than what I'm perceiving. I could be, it could be like a uh, program thing. So I thought about this while I was gaming and listening to Alan Watts a lot. And when I'm gaming, I, the best part of like the, I kind of like the open world type games. And the best part for me is the part where it's a struggle. Like when you're first starting out, and you don't have enough money to buy ammunition like in Grand Theft Auto or something. Oh, you know? okay, yeah. And so you got to go knock over liquor stores or just rob people on the street, you know? Yeah. And it's like a struggle. Yeah. Later on in, you know, in those types of games, when you got like a mansion and helicopters and tanks or what the fuck ever, depending on what game it is, it's not as interesting to me. I like it when it's a struggle. Uh, yeah, it's a challenge, right? Once you have everything... Uh, to beat your opponents with. Yeah, it's not as much fun. Yeah, my girlfriend's son was showing me this game on his phone, Clash of the Clans or something, right? Yeah. And pretty much he's he's built this fortress and uh, surrounding security and stuff. So if he's attacked, like it takes like one minute and all of his opponents are dead and he rebuilds his shit like, you know, real quick. Yeah. And um and also when he attacks, he just kind of runs through 
his opponents and yeah. takes all their shit immediately. You know, it takes like a couple minutes. Yeah, that doesn't sound like as much fun. Right, that's what I'm thinking. It's not as much fun. Yeah, I started thinking about this because I was listening to Alan Watts and he was talking about, um, you know, imagine that you could uh, control your dreams. Who is Alan Watts? He's like a, a philosopher who brought um, Eastern philosophies to Western culture okay. back in the day. Um, okay. When I say back in the day, I'm thinking it's like the 50s and 60s. Okay. I've never heard of the guy. Yeah. Well, I think it was like a professor or something. But um, he was talking about, you know, you know, if you could dream anything, you know, say you could dream like, years of your life in a dream yeah and then wake up and do it again uh you would naturally start out you know with dancing girls and excellent food and like wild sex and like all this fun enjoyable stuff you know endless amounts of chocolate you know whatever you're into but after a while you would become bored with that and you would you know start wanting to do things that were more of a challenge possibly dangerous and you'd be thrilled about that. And eventually, you would end up right back where you are right now, just living your own existence. Jeez. And I was like, whoa. That kind of, it got me thinking, you know. It, it gave me like a sense of gratitude about the discomforts I live with. You okay. Know? You know, it's just part of being alive. Yeah. Um, so I started thinking about that and that's, you know, how I got to the gaming thing and the, you know, the matrix thing. Cause you know, I don't know what goes on with people when they're like laid out in a bed for long periods of time, like in a coma or whatever. I don't know where they are. I mean, we see them there, but what is their reality? Like, are they like walking down a beach or something or, huh? you know, and just like in a dream, because people come back from comas. When I wake up <laughs> yeah. from a dream, I can, you know, I can some like I know I was dreaming something, but a lot of times I can't find it or I don't remember it or it disappears really fast. Yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah, especially so, when it's something amazing. Yeah, and you know, a dream, a dream. Even if I don't remember it, I can wake up from a dream and have this feeling throughout the day sometimes that is the same feeling I was having in the dream. Mm-hmm. And I might not even remember what was going on. Like I might be super anxious because something crazy was going on in my dream, or um, I might be fucking horny as hell because I was, you know, doing something sexual in my dream. You know, so yeah. I might just wake up ready to go. Like, oh shit, you know, time to go. <laughs> it's go time. <laughs> <laughs> So that's kind of what my week's been like. Yeah. What have you been doing? Oh, God. I work this week. All right. So I got a, a crazy phone call. Then this ruined the rest of my week, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I got, uh, cause I got this phone call from this chick who, um, I've never met before. It wasn't a phone call. She messaged me on Facebook with her phone number to call her. I never met her before. I call her because I'm interested, and um, I'm sitting there with my girlfriend, and she's on, she, this chick's on speakerphone, and because uh, I'm doing it right, you know, I'm not calling some random chick behind my girlfriend's back. Oh yeah, you don't <laughs> want to do that. Yeah, you always get found out. Yeah, so. So this girl starts telling me everything about myself. I know where you used to live off of this road, and you were married to Kelly, and you know you had three boys, and she drives this, and you drove that, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, the fuck? And then she tells me that uh, my ex-wife was having an affair with her boyfriend back when she was still living with me. And I'm like, the fuck? Because... I know you guys out there don't know my ex-wife, but I know her and Joseph knows her. And this is not like cheating is nowhere near her wheelhouse, you know? Yeah, I would not picture that. Yeah, I would never have thought in a million years, especially with a guy that's in a relationship with another girl. Um, Because 
dude, that's like the shit that pisses her off more than anything. And um, she's just extremely conservative. It's just not at all in her wheelhouse, right? So my mind's blown immediately. Like, I think the chick, you know, like, I'm like, you're thinking of the wrong Kelly. You know, this is somebody <laughs> else. This isn't my <laughs> ex-wife. And then she starts reading me off text messages and shit. And I'm like, fuck, I hear her fucking country bumpkin accent all in these texts. Yeah. You know, because uh, the way Kelly talks is how she also text messages. And um, and then she <laughs> fucking sent me over screenshots of like 20 pages of text messages and stuff. Oh, wow. Right. And fucking I'm paying alimony to Kelly. So I'm pissed. I'm like... I don't know what I am probably for the first day. And then the next day I start to get a little upset about, um, you know, a, a bunch of stuff yeah. to go along with it. And then uh, I talked to my therapist. I um, talked to you about it. You know, I talked to my girlfriend about it. And eventually last night I ended up talking to Kelly about it. And, you know, something my therapist had recommended was talking to her because there's probably another side to this story. So I'm talking to Kelly and I'm like, yeah, I got a message to call somebody that I'd never met before. And, you know, I don't know who this chick is and blah, blah, blah. She was like, it was Belinda. Oh, my God. I cannot believe that psycho girl messaged you, you know, <laughs> she knew who it was she, immediately. Yeah. And um and I was telling Kelly what all this girl was saying and what the text messages were saying. And she's like, Kelly is like, yeah, OK. So, you know, she Kelly admitted to a lot of stuff in the text messages, which none of it is extremely incriminating. You know, it looks bad, yeah. but it's not like concrete evidence of adultery or anything. Yeah, yeah. None of it is. And she was like, you know, yeah, so I talked to him. He talked to me. He said a lot of really nice things that made me feel a certain way. And then fucking uh, as soon as he uh, as soon as I found out he was seeing somebody, I ended it with him because I don't want that, you know, and that's the type of person he is. And I'm still his friend and she's a fucking psycho, you know. So Kelly has like zero respect for this lady. And um, that sounds more like Kelly. Yeah. Exactly. When she explained it to me, like even her demeanor in explaining it to me was totally Kelly did not fucking do what this girl thinks that she did. And, you know, she called me this chick. Belinda called me yesterday and was fishing for more details because she had eventually like gone through his phone records. Aside from his text messages, she'd gone through his phone records. Isn't this fun talking about this? Dude, what? <laughs> So she wanted more information like God, was he well, like 18 years old can or Kelly, something? Can Kelly meet him on her lunch break? I mean, is there any way that can happen? And I'm like, did not she has the kids, so I don't know. She's like, Well, he's we're not together on Sundays, so it must be on Sundays. And I'm thinking I, I told her, I said, Well, I take my kids home pretty early on Sundays because that's when I record my show. And it's uh, you know. Pretty much she gets out of church and I'm dropping the kids off to her. Like she doesn't have any time to meet him, but I'm still thinking maybe there's a possibility. I don't know. But as much as I wanted to believe this chick and totally go off on my ex-wife, I believe my ex-wife, <laughs> you know, I, I think Kelly was well, telling you know her truth. better too. I do. Yeah. yeah. And, um, God, man, but, but from Tuesday to last night, it was like I was just fucking in my head about it. You know what I mean? It's fucking bitch. Yeah, yeah. There was no point in giving you any of that information. Yeah, I could have gone the rest of my life without knowing any of that. Even yeah. if something had happened, there was no reason that you for you to have that information. And the guy was our bug guy, so he came out and sprayed for bugs, right? I was, in fact, paying him to come out and hit on my wife because Kelly said he came out and hit on her, you know? Those bug guys, you gotta he, watch them. She said he said all the right things. And this chick yesterday, she was like, "I know him. I know that's what he does. He goes over and sprays girls' houses and then sleeps with them." And I'm thinking, like, "Wow, oh wow, <laughs> the fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> I've dated girls like that before. All the years I've been an electrician, <laughs> twenty something years, I have never, even, I've never slept with a client. No, me neither. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I've had them make advances on me, but yeah, I've 
I've never initiated there's, anything. And there's got to be a, a sense of professionalism. That dude could get his fucking company in trouble. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he could. Uh, yeah. A husband walks in, or he gets some chick pregnant, or some shit. Yeah, yeah. The fuck. He might not even really be doing it. The way I understand this chick is that she's just fucking crazy and thinks he's sleeping with the whole town of Sumter. Yeah. <laughs> she probably would think he's sleeping with me. Yeah. That's nuts, dude. <laughs> yeah, a I've little been, bit. I've been with that before. Oh, God. Oh, you have. Yeah. I've, I've heard had, stories about that one. I've had girlfriends like that before. Uh. Just, yeah, every time a, a big set of tits, it doesn't matter what it's attached to, would come into, like, the area I was in trouble. Oh my God. Thank God. Brandy's not like that. Hey babe, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> she totally looks at chicks with me. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. All right. So that's how my fucking week was. Also, I, um, I know we don't talk about this a whole bunch on here, but I was able to, you had a birthday I on did. Friday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, we went out for sushi. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. I I also, on Thursday, was able to celebrate 11 years of not doing drugs or drinking alcohol. Good job. 11 years in a row. Oh, I'm sorry. Great job. Great with job. The, with the with Wonder, the Wonder woman. woman thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. So that's my week. Okay. <laughs> you got any big plans this week? No. Okay. Um, Monday is uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s day, so uh, my plan is to stay home and, you know, check my camping gear in case we got a bug out. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something about jacking it to African-American women. Oh, that's not <laughs> just on Martin Luther King Jr.'s day. That's like every day. No, and it's, yeah, it's just because of the... The vibe, the way I sense the vibe, the vibe of, in the country, of our country right yeah. now. Um, I feel like it's kind of like a uh, tinderbox or something. Oh, God, yeah, it's been two weeks since we've done our show, and in mm -hmm. the last two weeks, the there was um, that incident at the Capitol. Yeah, there was the uh, extreme conservative group that raided the Capitol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the Capitol is so easy to raid <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that some guy in a buffalo hat can fucking walk in. Yeah. What the fuck? And just take over Nancy Pelosi's desk <laughs> <laughs> and start fucking writing checks to his family. And <laughs> what the fuck was going on up there at the Capitol? I don't know, man. I, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it sounds like they were overwhelmed by the number of people, but I don't know, man. Yeah, but we also heard that there were fucking single-filed lines of people waiting to get in, Yeah, and, waiting for the police to move the barricades. And they knew people were going to be there beforehand. Yeah. It all kind of reeks of suspicious. Yeah. Like on all sides from all angles. like, And everybody's trying to spin it to their own advantage. Yep, exactly. Everybody's trying to spin it. I, I think that's as deep as... Them. That's probably as deep as I want to get into this subject. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what happened, though. So that's why you're feeling the vibes that maybe you need to bug out at some point. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, when I saw that on the news, I was like, oh, shit. Because uh, I think we were working while it was happening, and we got out of work. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you got home. And I was like, oh, damn, because my brother sent me a text message, and he was like, said something about it. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, turn on CNN. So I got it on my phone. And I looked at it, I was like, holy shit. You yeah. Know? So I went down to the gun store because <laughs> that's what people like me do. Yeah. I went down to the gun store and there was literally no ammunition. The only ammunition they had that was left was like 12 gauge bird shot. Fuck. All the ammunition went like before when this like thing started, the Fuck. riots and everything started, you just couldn't find like the main stuff and, uh, uh, assault rifle ammunition, but now all the ammunition and a lot of the guns were missing. So we're right next to a gun store here at our studio. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm about to see I've if they're open. There. See if they're open today. Maybe I'll go by after the show. They are. They're open till six. Go do a live stream. I'm going to go, <laughs> <laughs> go do some interviews. 
yeah, make some video content of whether or not they have, whether or not they have any ammo, or even guns. Because I'm, I want to buy a gun. Yeah, something tells me I've never been in there, but something about the outside of that place makes me think that the inside of it has really attractive women trying to sell you guns. Oh my god, it really does. It like, you get really that? does have attractive women. Yeah, I've been in there. That's where oh. I used to buy my ammo. Okay, so yeah. I wasn't off. On no. That. I mean, there's a bunch of dudes in there, but the women that work there are all way fucking attractive. Yeah. Okay. So, once again, Joseph's correct on his presumptions about that. things. How about that? I'm like a prophet. It's like stereotyping. I'm the West Columbia prophet. Yeah, okay. Is that what you are? <laughs> all right. I am so, now. So let's talk about your topic. What do you got? Oh, um. Are you doing a topic? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, let's do it. Kind of sprung it on me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hey, Joseph. Didn't we have a topic we wanted to go over today? Uh, yeah, I think we were, we decided we were going to do this construction topic. That yeah, was... we'll kind of do it together, I guess. Okay, yeah, we got to do it together because my all my stuff's real short. I don't have anything on it, but when you bring up a subject, let's just fucking... I got a feeling if we each came up with a list of eight eight things, oh man, we would have the same things. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And I think that for each one of your points, we would both have like five stories apiece. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Okay, I work on people's houses. I do um, as a carpenter or a handyman. <laughs> I like to go with carpenter. Handyman just sounds, I mean, it's true. I am pretty adept at jury rigging stuff and coming up with alternative solutions for things. And I think that's how I got in it, got tagged with a handyman nomaker. Okay. Nomaker. Is that the right use of that word? I've never heard that word before in my life. Okay. I just made it up. You're you're the college kid over here. (laughs) Yeah. I went straight into electrical work out of high school. That's college, isn't it? Electrical work? Oh, work. Work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Not school. Yeah, I'm college boy. You can call me college boy on the job. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Start doing that. I'll call you college boy. (laughs) Yeah. You figure it out, college boy. 30 years older (laughs) than you. Every time we're on a job together from now on. All right, college boy. Why'd you do it like that, college boy? Didn't they teach you that in art school? <laughs> no. In fact, they oh, did not shit. <laughs> teach me that in art school. So there's a lot of, you know, I've run into homeowners, and there's a lot of things that uh, go on between me and homeowners that uh, rub me the wrong way or are sort of downright rude. No and shit. I think, I think a lot of it is unintentional. I don't think a lot of these folks are being, trying intentionally trying to be an asshole. Really? Some of them, I think, are just assholes. But think by and large people aren't trying to be assholes to someone they're asking for help from stories are popping up in my head like fucking prairie <laughs> dogs coming out of holes they're just like <laughs> pew, 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 fucking all kinds of stories are popping up right now so I'm, i made a list of things that homeowners do that annoy me okay okay so here's the first one yeah let's do the first one uh when they dress inappropriately this could go oh. for men or women Oh, I've had homeowners wearing like men, even not wearing quite enough clothes. You know, I don't go to the grocery store in boxers. I certainly am not going to deal with a construction dude coming over to my house to do a bathroom in boxers either. Yeah. Oh, I have. Yeah. I think that uh, now I haven't experienced the men being dressed inappropriately to the best of my room. It's you usually know, memory. The, it's usually the women. Yeah, I remember you know years ago I did this um did this job up in Rock Hill and uh the chick you know she was very attractive. I think her and her husband were both veterinarians and he was at work and she came home to check on you know what was going on around the house while we're working and I don't know why she was wearing this but she was wearing like a sports bra and some spandex shorts. And nothing under either one of those. Her nipples were like an inch long, and they were fucking sticking out erect as shit. Oh, man. And her fucking, (laughs) her spandex short had like the juiciest looking camel toe. And she's just like, almost like thrusting her fucking hips out, you know, to to push the camel toe in my face almost. And I'm just like sweating 
trying not to stare at it and trying to look her in the fucking eyes and not get an erection and stab yeah. her with it, you know? Just let me bump it into you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Get away. It's very distracting. Yeah. You know, I don't know what's up with that, but it bothers me. You know, I've had them doing that before. It's just God. like like way too, I don't know. And maybe I'm just like a sexist pig, but... Yeah. You know, because you, you, I'm not trying to tell... You? Well, this this could be coming off to some people as um, as a white cis male. I should not be telling women how to dress, mm. you know? And really... Yeah. I'm not oh, the one, I could see that. Yeah. Our culture and our society tells people how to dress. It's not me. Because at one time, just showing your ankles was a big fucking deal. Yeah. You know? Remember those old... We're way beyond that now. You know those old bathing suits from the 20s? Mm-hmm. The one pieces that have built-on skirts and... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the way things are now, but sometimes it's like, I don't know, I'm here to work, dude. I need. I got kids to feed, you know, and bills to pay. You remember that fucking, that job uh, that we, we did a, a couple months ago? No, you don't no. remember it. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyways. I block it out like a... Like a traumatic event. That's all right. You'll remember when we go back. I went to the um. I went to do the demo on the job before we went out there. Yeah. I went to do the demo by myself, and the lady is a gorgeous, uh, dark haired, dark skinned woman. You know, like a uh, olive skinned woman. How would I not remember that? I don't know, because she totally came in there while we were there. Anyways. Uh, she's out in the swimming pool doing the fucking backstroke and shit, and then she lays on the fucking uh, lays out on the lounge chair and is like sunbathing and shit right outside the window of or the the glass door from where I'm working, and I'm like, dude, come the fuck on! You can't. Why are you doing this? You know, there's men in here working. I've had people's daughters coming out of the bathroom in towels and shit or answering the door in a fucking towel. Yeah. You know, when I ring the doorbell and shit, like, man. Try to control yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to do a job. <laughs> and it's not, I'm not here to work on you. So stop trying to show me everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it ain't payment. No, it's not payment. I can't payment. take that and pay a bill with oh. it. So aside from construction, did I tell you this story from my um, tattoo artist, uh, the guy that's doing my back right now? He said that he had, were you there when he was telling us the story? Yeah, I was. Yeah, but where he had the, again. yeah, he had the, um, the guy came up and was like, hey, I need you to tattoo my girlfriend's pussy. You know, it's like, right. Well, no, he didn't say that. He said it was on her thigh or something at first. And then the more he talked about it, the further up her thigh the tattoo got. Yeah, You know, so he, the artist makes this fucking, like he said, like a origami thong for her to put over her, you know, with like paper towels and shit to cover her. And there's only one spot open and that spot's where the tattoo's going and stuff. <laughs> Trying to be as professional as possible. Yeah. Does the tattoo and shit. And, uh, and the boyfriend's like, hey, just rip it off and show him your pussy. And so she did. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, there you go. That's your tip. That's, That's not, not a tip. tip. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Motherfucker's seen a pussy before? Yeah. At my age, I've actually seen quite a few of them. Yeah. I mean, I always want to see another one, but <clears throat> it ain't a tip. Yeah, it's not a tip. No. It's a bonus, but it's not a tip. What else you got? Okay, the other one is related to that one. Maybe we kind of hit on that a little bit, is when they act inappropriately. I've had homeowners, like, uh, I was working on this one uh, person's condo, and his girlfriend was there all, like, like every time we'd go there, his girlfriend would be there, like, half drunk and, like, popping pills or what the fuck ever. Oh, shit. And, like, you know, always try and talk to us while we're working. Yeah. Which is fine. You know, people like to talk. But we'd get real handsy while talking to us, like, touching my chest and the other guy I was working with, like touching our shoulders and stuff, oh, and like wow. standing touching way too chest. close. Yeah, you should come up and touch your chest. How long ago was this? A couple years ago or a long time ago? It was uh, 
Why? You don't think women want to touch my chest now? Is that no, what you're I'm saying? just curious as to who you were working with. Man, I just had a woman touching my chest right before I came in here. All right, I can smell it. Jeez, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> me <too. laughs> oh, no, God. It was, <laughs> it was probably 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Okay. And it was, you know, I eventually Jeez. had to go to the guy who, who, you know, owned the company and be like, look, I don't want to work over there. Because of that. Yeah. No shit, so man. Somebody needs to say something to her or just don't send me over there anymore. I don't know, it's not cool. Like I get it. I'm in your I'm in your personal space, like in your living space, but I don't think her boyfriend would be cool with it for one. Yeah. Uh for right, two. Yeah. Um my personal space is still my personal space, even when I'm in someone else's personal space. Shit, man. And I ain't going around touching his stuff, you know? He probably appreciates that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I may have had a cup of coffee early on in that on that job before I was like realized that having a cup of coffee apparently means something else. Like they made you a cup of coffee. Yeah, she did. She did yeah, she made us mm. some coffee, which is a polite mm. thing to do. Yeah, you know, uh, if I knew cup of coffee was going to come with being handsy, I would have turned it down. You know, my my girlfriend asked me last night. If I was to, um, if we're not dating and you were to come over to my house and see me, would you hit on me? And I was like, uh, no. Why would I do that if I'm working? And she was like, no, well, all right, say I was hitting on you, would you reciprocate it? And I was like, no, nah, probably fucking not. Like, you would have to get completely naked get me completely naked, take my penis and stick it inside you because I wouldn't be willing to do any, I wouldn't be willing to initiate anything with a customer. Yeah. I'm not willing to fucking do that shit. It's uh, totally unprofessional. It is, yeah. yeah. And then she asked, she asked the question, well, what if, what if, okay, what if we were in a grocery store and you saw me like picking out vegetables or something, would you come over and hit on me? I'm like, no, nah, probably not because I'd see you I'd think you're beautiful, and I'd be like, the chick's just trying to go grocery shopping. Morgan, don't fucking go over there and bother her. (laughs) She just wants to get her carrots and cucumbers, you know, for what. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) You know what she's doing with those veggies. Yeah. But seriously, you know, I don't want to bother some chick in the fucking grocery store. I mean, maybe I want to, but I'm not going to. Yeah, I have difficulty with that, too. I'm always like, I mean, this broad's just trying to go about her day. Mm -hmm. I will probably be like the hundredth dude that's tried to get her attention today. Yeah, no you know? shit. It's difficult being a guy trying to meet girls. It is because you don't know, dude. I mean, and and that goes back to the me telling her like you would have to get naked, get me naked, and do everything yourself because I feel like if I initiate anything, whether it be on the job or just with some chick I meet, you know, out in my daily whatever, you know, whatever I'm doing. If I just meet a chick and I make an advancement on her in any way, it's fucking sexual harassment or some kind of fucking like I'm a creep or a weirdo. Like it's so fucking hard for men to pick up women due to that. Yeah, yeah. Because accusations are just thrown out there. And it's like, whoa, I just asked for your phone number. You know, I'm mean, like, what the fuck? Why am I a fucking creep? I know it's happened to both of us, but it probably does not happen to both of us as much as it happens to other dudes because we're both like attractive gentlemen. Yeah. So that probably gets us out of a lot of trouble. Yeah. You know, it can. It can also, like, I don't know if you've experienced it as much as I have, but being an attractive gentleman that girls give attention to also puts a target on me for, yeah. you know, those kind of accusations. Yeah. I used to have a target on me till you showed up. I was like, <laughs> Oh, thank God. <laughs> Shoo. Whatever. Somebody else going to catch the heat now. <laughs> yeah. Those, those two, uh, those two that you mentioned, the, um, women dressing inappropriately and acting inappropriately Almost go hand in hand a little bit, you know? But. Yeah. It wasn't just women, though. I've had dudes not wearing enough clothes before. I don't know what that was all about. But it's just awkward in our culture to be not wearing enough clothes. Yeah, I think so. When a stranger is in your house. What's next? All right. I got uh, number three here. 
when they know that you're going to be there for a long time and they do not show you where a decent bathroom is. Oh, my God. They don't even want you using the fucking bathroom sometimes. Oh, like, I've had that. Yeah. Like, uh, you're not going to use the bathroom in our house. Yeah. Yeah, I've had that. I was, oh, yeah. That uh, recently happened to me, and I was like, well, I need to use the restroom. Is there one you, you want me to use? And she started talking about, you know, how it freaks her out, and it's her personal bathroom because uh, she was down to, like, one bathroom. Yeah. I was like, well, I can go up the street, you know, if you're more comfortable with that. Right. And she still let me use it. But I, that's weird. I went in there and, you know, I took my shoes off because she wanted me to take my shoes off in the bathroom. I, yeah, before I went in the bathroom and like everything I touched, I touched with like a, a sanitizing uh, napkin or whatever the, you know, those little the bleach soaked napkins for oh, like cleaning your hands yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I wiped everything down your hands. on my way out the door, including yeah. doorknobs, light switches, everything. Like it was a fucking crime scene. You know, I did use the bathroom though, but I've, you know, I've had, and I, I worked on this one dude's house who he had an enormous house. I think he had like seven bathrooms in it. Yeah. Every bathroom had a freaking bidet and, uh, nice, you know, I kind of understood, but he had a specific bathroom he wanted me to use. And that was cool. That is cool. Cause he was like, use this bathroom. Yeah. And I, I've run into that, which is, which yeah. is nice. That's nice when they're like, Hey, we got a bathroom right next to the laundry room. Or it's a powder room, you know? Yeah. That they don't take showers in and have all their personal toiletries and shit in. You know, that that's kind of that's usually a pretty safe bathroom to go to. But um but yeah, I've uh I do work for a company um that does a lot of mold remediation and stuff. And whenever I need to use the bathroom and I'm on one of their jobs most of the time they won't let me use the bathroom on the job, you know, most of the time, unless they've been told beforehand specifically that, Hey, look, you guys use this bathroom that's next to the garage, you know, while you're here working. Um, but most of the time, yeah, they, they won't let me use the bathroom on their jobs. And it's like, and, but they're not, fuck, I gotta pee. <laughs> even their, their company's not there for just like a couple hours. Their company's there for an extended period of time. We're supported, John. Yeah. Don't oh, their own guys have to urinate? Are we, they robots or something? We worked on a job last week where they had the bathroom torn out, or they had the toilet out of the bathroom. What the fuck were we supposed to do? And then the house is like surrounded by streets, you know, where people oh, are yeah, driving, right. you know. Yeah. You I can't just I walk in the backyard. Yeah, you can't just walk in the backyard and pull your dick out. I well, did anyways, I did. but yeah. <laughs> it's that is, just a dick. Everybody calm down. I get really, really upset when it's a builder doing the work and they don't have a fucking portage on on the job cuz it's like $75. Yeah, it's a nominal cost that they can throw in their fucking cost of the job and have a fucking portage on there for people to piss in. Yeah. Yeah, cuz if you don't do that, people are still going to piss. Yeah. You're going to end up with pee bottles around the job, yep. five gallon buckets with human feces in them. Yep. Or people uh. leaving the job a lot. Yeah. Because I, a lot of us drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. If you got to take a shit, you got to leave the job to, to shit. If there's no bathroom there, you know, you don't have yeah. to, you can do the paint can thing, Ugh. but who wants to fucking do that in the it's middle of winter? Of, yeah. It's kind of a shit deal for anybody else on the job. Yeah. You know, like, Hey, get that gallon of paint, you know, <laughs> you pick it <laughs> That's up. Totally it up. It's just full of diarrhea. Dude, I've been crawling under houses before and seen human shit up against the foundation wall. Yeah. Just yeah. fucking sitting there with toilet paper because somebody needed to take a dump John. and and there was no other place to shit, so they went under yeah. the house. Jesus. Yeah, well, one of my first framing jobs um when I was learning how to frame was out in Arkansas and it was like out in the freaking woods. They had like no there was no water, there was no electricity. There was just like a bunch of trees knocked down and we were building a house. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, to go to the bathroom, I had to walk in the woods. Like the first day, I didn't know. I thought there'd be something to use. Yeah. So after that, I always brought toilet paper. Ever since then, in fact, I bring toilet paper on my truck everywhere. I had to go find like a down tree to like hang my ass over oh, and take God. a dump. Yeah. And what sucked about it was, you know, I'd have to take a dump more than once. 
in a yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Same tree. Yeah. It starts getting real gross back there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Flies gather. So in the future, I will bring a shovel if I find myself in that position again and start making little cat holes. You know what You know what I did? Um, and somebody uh, suggested this to me a long time ago, but I would take like a five-gallon bucket and put a Lowe's bag in the bucket around and wrap it around the rim and then take a shit sit on the bucket, take a shit in the Lowe's bag and then tie it in a knot and throw it away. It's, but the rim of that bucket is not fucking comfortable. Let me tell you, they make it, they actually make a thing that fits on those. Yeah. The toilet seat thing for uh, camping and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's but, what I, damn. So I could go down the road to camping world or whatever the mm-hmm. fuck. And you uh, could outdoors in the warehouse, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. They probably have one. Oh shit. That'd be badass to have on the job. Cause yeah, you know. or or somebody could just pry open their fucking wallet and get a portage on it. <laughs> yeah, and get it clean. Jesus, we were on a oh. job a couple of weeks ago, and I go in to piss in the portage on, and there's a turd on the fucking seat. Man, come And I on. was like, dude, I can't even, I can't be in the same room with that. It's not a room, though. It, it's not. It's, it's like, like the a, size of a phone booth. Yeah, you're like within... 12 inches of someone's shit. I could have like turned around to use the urinal and my jacket would be in their shit. Oh. Or my oh. tools or something. God. Who the fuck shits on the seat? Who does it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Some asshole. Yeah, some asshole. Someone who hates so other people. The contractor thought maybe it was the kids in the neighborhood terrorizing us with their turds. I don't know. Yeah, that's a thing too. That's a thing. That's, that's a, thing. a thing. And yeah. I, I don't really think it was like the, you know, the other dudes on the job. Because I mean, they all seem like, you know, people who'd been doing construction for a while. It wasn't like they just showed up and this was their first construction job. Yeah, man. Or first time around the toilet. I don't know. Or I like I like to blame everyone on the job that's not me. <laughs> well, it wasn't me. So <laughs> okay. calm down. All right. Okay. What else you got there, <laughs> Joseph? <laughs> When the homeowner tells me that they watched a YouTube video and that could they could do it themselves. Holy fucking shit. I am surprised at how often this happens to me. No shit. And how it's like I'm newly insulted every time it happens. <laughs> you can, I can I don't know about you. I can feel heat build up in my face <laughs> because I want to fucking explode at people and be like, "What the fuck am I doing here?" Yeah. I, you watched a YouTube video. Handle it. Yeah, do yeah, do you realize the number of fucking scars I got on my body and like nails I've stepped on and times I've shot myself with nail guns and all this shit to learn this fucking craft? Right. You know? And you just watch a fucking YouTube video, you think you can do what I can do? Oh my Get the God. fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. And it's like then those are the same people that then bitch about the price yeah. when you give it to them because they're like, "Oh, I mean, I- is that, come on, guys, you can do better than that. I mean, I watched the YouTube video. It doesn't look that hard. Yeah, or I saw it on uh, HGTV or whatever. <laughs> you just got to pick, you just got to pull the floor up and put a new floor down. It's no big deal. I saw those twin brothers doing it. Yeah. Fucking asshole. Dang. Oh, my God, the fucking YouTube. Now, I'll admit, anytime I work on a vehicle, and I know how to work on vehicles, but I will still YouTube the process for the specific vehicle because even yes. though even though I know how to um, change a valve cover gasket, um, I'll look up the video to make sure I take all the right stuff loose, you know, beforehand because it's a lot easier if I can watch a ten minute video and then go outside and do what was in that video, you know, yeah. rather than me trying to figure out what's next, yeah, you know, or whatever. So uh, YouTube videos make things more helpful, but um, I I can't imagine dropping my fucking vehicle off at the mechanic and being like, hey, can you um, can you guys machine down my heads for me and replace my head gasket? Uh, Because I blew the head gasket and I know the heads have got to be warped. Can you do that? And I watched a YouTube video. It doesn't really look that difficult. So you guys will have it to me. What at lunchtime? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, because that's essentially what we get, right? Yeah, It'd be like a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, that is what we get. And the I, fuck? I, yeah, I'm not knocking YouTube. YouTube is an amazing resource. No shit. And yeah. I go there for 
all kinds of information. And I also, because of the nature of what I do with um, construction, I'm not always just doing floors. Like one day I'll be doing floors. One day I'm dicking around somebody's plumbing. One day I'm like hanging sheetrock. You know, it keeps moving around. And so on some of these things with some of these materials, it's like if it's been a while since I've done it, you know? Yeah. Like if I'm laying V VCT or something. Yeah. And it's been a while, I'm like, I'll just watch a YouTube video and it refreshes my memory about how to do it. That does not teach me the the details of like how to efficiently come up with measurements, how to safely use a skill saw. Right. You know, there's a whole bunch of information that you just can't get without putting your hands on it. You know? Yeah. I read this um this thing about this guy explaining how uh the homeowner what you know how the material wouldn't cost this much and he saw something that that said he, you know it could be done $800 cheaper and so the builder was like okay you can do it $800 cheaper sure um so I'll uh I'll come by he said I'll do it for that price and come by and teach you how to do it now, uh, don't forget, you'll have to have all the tools. And he's like, what? You can't just use your tools? No, you're going to have to have all the tools. You can use my tools. I can rent them to you for another $300. You know, and then he's like, and, you know, you're going to have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go down to the lumber yard and get all the lumber you need and shit. And uh, I'm like, whoa, God, I got to get up that early? Yeah, I mean, you want to be there and get get what's good, you know, and first thing in the morning before everybody comes and takes all the lumber for the day, you know. And then he's like, "Well, um, then you know, I can I can't come out and help you until next Tuesday." Oh, I was hoping to have it done by the weekend. Well, sorry, but you know, if you're not gonna pay me this amount of money, I got other customers that will, so I need to do them. And Tuesday's the day that I have available to rent out my tools and everything, and. <laughs> you know, by the end of it, the guy's like, Jesus, just whatever, just do it. You know, yeah. I'll just pay you what you asked for. Because <laughs> people don't fucking think about that shit, man. No, man. I don't do that shit to my dentist. Yeah. I don't go to the, I don't go to the grocery store and haggle the fucking price at the grocery store either. No. I don't, the yeah, the shit, the shit gets under my skin. I understand there's a sales technique to lying about what the price is so you can bring, bring the price down to uh -huh. deceive the person into thinking they're getting a better price. Yeah. But I just, I don't roll with that. I'm like, here, this is the price. I feel this is a fair price. Yeah. Fucking people. All right, let's take a break. Hi, I'm Troy McSure. You might remember me from such films as Mom, I Slept with a Zombie and the docudrama I Was Raped by D.B. Cooper. Well, today I want to talk about a new form of currency. Guys, did you ever hear the phrase, sex sells? Women have been doing it for years. Bikini beer commercials, strip clubs and restaurants, even getting out of traffic tickets. Gentlemen, your time has come. There's a new app available in all the app stores called Just The Tip. Have you ever been out to eat and only had enough money to pay for the meal? Well, Just the Tip will automatically send a dick pic to your female server. All women want to receive these, but guys don't know when the time is appropriate. Just the Tip removes the performance anxiety of sending a dick pic. All you do is load pics at your leisure. It doesn't even have to be your dick. Just the Tip comes loaded with thousands of veiny cocks to choose from. Thick black ones, small Asian PPs, cut and uncut. Also, try it out in your barber shop, grocery stores, and tattoo shops. Well, the cops don't want to see you reaching for anything suspicious, so just send a pic. You'll be surprised at what a good dick pic will do for you. Feeling awkward at a party? Just the Tip has an emergency broadcast feature to let everyone near you know who you are and what you're really all about. Men should be able to sell sex, too, instead of being shut down by the matriarchy that tries to make you believe women don't want to see your penis. For the love of God, please do not send a dick pic. Unsolicited dick pics are cruel and rude. Never send a dick pic if it's not asked for. Nobody wants to see your dick. This is also not a real app. Please do not promote this item. All right, and we're back. Okay. That was a great pee break. They have bathrooms here that we can use. 
Mm-hmm. And unlike, they work and they're clean. Unlike construction sites. No, there's a there's a OSHA rules about that. You know, you have to have for every ten employees, you have to have one porta john on a construction job. And uh, I think I've heard that. What does OSHA stand for? Occupational Safety Hazard Association Agency, something like that. Elf a- acrobats. Elf. Oh, a. <laughs> oh, she. <laughs> Association, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she. <laughs> And a, a lot of people, I've heard people pronounce it Asha. Asha? Yeah. Well, it's a, what do you call that, an anagram abbreviation or whatever? Yeah. So you could pronounce it that way, I guess. It's not wrong. Yeah, I guess so. Correctly would probably be to say the full name or say O-S-H-E. A. It's O-S-H-A. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm still doing it. Where okay, do you get so, the E from? Where I don't know, so that, I can do it wrong. Where's that coming from? I don't know, man. Uh, back to your topics. I'm sorry. Okay. I think we touched on this right before uh, we took a break. Uh, when they try to talk you down on price. Ooh. You know? <laughs> That's the, that is the oldest one for me since my very first job as an, uh, a business owner. Yeah. Being talked down on the price. Yeah. And I have never felt good about it whenever I've done it. It has always been painful. of the time, if I do anybody a favor, the job is worse than I thought it was going to be, and they never make good on their end. Like uh, the first one I had, like I said, was I was going to do this job for like $220 was the cost of the job, right? The guy's like... The guy's like, well, my buddy said he could do it for 175 so if you can come down to 175 I'll let you do it because I like you. And, uh, you know, I do real estate, so I can use you on a few of my properties and blah, blah, blah. Ooh, and I was that's, like. That's another one I didn't put on the list. Yeah, but I'm like, oh, man, that sounds great because I'm just starting my business. If, if I can get in good with this guy, I'm good, you know. So I go, <laughs> I do the job. I was like, okay, I'll do the job for one seventy five. dollars um, but by the time I bought material, paid for gas, and paid the guy to help me, I ended up paying uh, paying out one hundred and eighty five dollars. So I lost ten dollars on the job, and <laughs> that is how every job I fucking negotiate my my prices. That's how every single job goes, man. I fucking hate negotiating down on prices because I yeah. know what the fuck it's going to cost. Yeah, I I went through a lot of pain to come up with the price you know yep and it's it's tricky because sometimes i i do the i come up with the you know the the estimate on the job and sometimes it's real low Mm -hmm. and i just barely scrape by and it's a little painful Mm. and then sometimes it's like perfect and then sometimes it's like way high yeah it's scary i kind of feel like it all kind of comes out in the wash so to speak it balances yeah i can yeah like for the individual customer it might be no difference to them but to me over a period of a year it kind of balances out i think so that's why i do the thing where everybody gets charged the same you know contractors will want a contractor price or whatever and um i don't fucking do contractor prices I, everybody gets charged the same it's a hundred dollars to do a recess light you want a recess light it's a hundred bucks i don't give a fuck if you're a contractor or not that's what it's going to cost to do the recess light. You could be a homeowner that lives in the hood or a contractor, and I'm doing work on your personal home uh, uh, that's four stories out by the lake. I don't give a fuck. It's $100 for the recess light. Yeah, because it's still a customer. Yeah. I I try to do all the customers the same. Now, if some people have a need, you know, because recess lights are not a need. They're a want. Yeah, a Um, meter would be a need. Yeah, somebody having a fucking tree fall on their shit, you know, in the middle of the night and they need their meter replaced. They have a need, but they also live in a really bad area. They don't make a lot of money, you know, whatever, and they're just scraping by week to week. I might help them out. Yeah. You know, but um, for fucking most people, it's it is what it is, man. Quit trying to talk me down. I can't. If if I was gonna fucking negotiate my price, that means I'm already fucking you from the beginning. Yeah, I'm you know? already lying to you about the price. Yeah, that's what I don't like about it. I feel like I'm being dishonest if I have to gauge my price with the anticipation of changing it. Right. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Fuck people. <laughs> God, people are the worst, man. 
And you know, it's always your the people. What? You are a people. Oh, I thought you were saying like possessive your. Like no, no, you your people, like my people. <laughs> no, the you're, fuck? <laughs> you're part of, you're part of people. Don't talk about Japanese people like that. <laughs> I haven't done any work with the Japanese. The Japanese. Does that sound <laughs> does that sound like I'm it's from okay. the nineteen seventies? We'll, you are, so we'll give you a pass. <laughs> you are from the nineteen seventies. Dude, oh, I was trying god. to write a letter today. Oh my god. I got Nobody f- does that. I know. I got a friend of mine who's happens to actually be Japanese. Um, he doesn't do like social media or any kind of shit like that. Glenn? Gene. Gene. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was a G. And every year he sends me a card and I was like, I'm going to try writing a letter. It has been so long since I've written a letter. <laughs> I remember it was a thing, you yeah. know, before this, you know, the whole internet thing. Dude, we had pen pals thing. and shit. Yeah. Remember pen pals? Yeah, I didn't, I don't think I ever had one, but I, I would write these beautiful, like craft these beautiful love letters to my girlfriend you know, Aww. with like artwork on them and poetry and like I'd make sure the handwriting was really nice and, you know, all this Jesus. stuff. And you know, press a flower and put it in there, some kind of shit. Just for her to fucking rip it up in your face yeah. and tell you she's going to cut your dick off. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, the girl I, I've, I've actually done that for a lot of girls, but the girl I was thinking of specifically didn't behave like that. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it was sweet. She was actually a really good girl and smart, too, because she left me. <laughs> okay no i'm not joking it was right before it was the asian chick wasn't it yeah it was right yeah. before my fucking life went to a whole nother place is that asian cambodian yeah yeah she was yeah it was it was the right move on her part i would have fucking dragged her da- down with me okay you know i'll buy that yeah now i'm fucking amazing i had to go through some shit anyway let's not talk about what was that. the topic we were on that brought us there <laughs> <laughs> little sidetrack there side note okay um this is also related to uh the last one when they try to help oh i know (laughs) you got you you have some good ones because that fucking shit dude listen to this i had a customer right around the corner from where we're at right now um and this guy (laughs) i was just going underneath to make a joint on a wire um yeah. That he found, he crawled under there and found it. And he was like, oh, wow. he was doing some work or whatever, went under there and found it. And he's an old retired military guy. And this motherfucker put on coveralls and came up under the house with me. And the whole time I'm like, please go the fuck away. Just let me do my job and get the fuck out of my hair. He's like, <laughs> I'll hold the flashlight for you. And I'm like, dude, you really don't need to. I can, I do this shit for a living. I can yeah. totally handle it. I promise. Yeah. You said he's retired. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay, so my old man, the old man is uh-huh. what I call him. Oh, yeah. The old man will have people work on his house because, you know, he's old. And yeah. working on the house is sometimes difficult for him or it's a skill thing that he doesn't have. Yeah. For example, the uh, electrical. He was trying to teach himself electrical stuff, you know. Your dad? Yeah. Huh? Because he wanted to do the electrical in the house. So he hired an electrician to come over and he was like, hey, man. This is what I'm thinking about doing for the electrical on this house. Your dad said this. Yeah. Uh huh. And he's like, I'm going to do it. I want you to come over here and look at all my work before I cover it up and make sure it's all safe and legal and all that. And I will pay you for that, you know, however much money you want. Yeah. And that, that seemed reasonable to me because then it's, you're acting in an inspection capacity. Yeah. You know? And uh, this other thing he does, which, uh, would be a little weird, but I understand his logic because my because I know the old man. The old man loves education. He loves to learn about stuff. Okay, he's always trying to learn stuff. So, some dude will come over to like work on the electrical panel or something. Yeah, he'll pull up a chair, sit down, get his pipe out, and start smoking and watching what they're doing. To him, he's just like, you know, he just wants to. He's not there to like because he thinks the person's trying to rip him off or anything. He just wants to know what's like how these things work yeah you know he just wants to know how a panel goes together or you know what kind of weird tools does this dude use yeah you know it's all innocent but from the standpoint of that dude doing the work it's got to be really uncomfortable yeah and now changing out a panel i'd probably be okay with somebody sitting there watching me change out a panel but when a guy's crawling under the house with me 
to watch me make a joint or whatever. Mm. I mean, I'm trying to get this done as fast as possible, take his money and go to the next fucking job. I don't want to sit down there and have a conversation about what tools I'm using and, yeah. you know, did I bring my blank plate and shit like that? And it's like, just dude, just let me do this and fucking go, please. Yeah. You know, yeah. but you can't say that to a customer. I mean, you can, but try yeah. not to as often as possible. <laughs> say that to a fucking customer. I, I perform better, actually, because I don't like being in front of people performing. Yeah. I perform better when people aren't watching me. You know, so like you put me on stage with something I know thoroughly there's a good chance I'll start losing information. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, if you put me on stage and ask me to, to s- recite, like, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, I probably wouldn't even be able to get out two lines. You yeah, know? you will have forgotten it due to the pressure put on you. I think so, The performance yeah. anxiety. Yeah, I don't do well in those situations. Yeah. I imagine that's a thing you can learn, you know, and get past. Yeah. You would know more than I would. It is a thing you can learn and eventually get past. Um, God almighty, the, the contractors ask to help out too, you know, if it'll make the job easier or if it'll help me out on the price and you know, whatever. And it's, yeah, I got a friend who, uh, is also a carpenter and he would say, uh, it costs this much for me to do the job. It costs double. If you want to watch, it costs triple. If you want to help. Yep. Cause it's a pain in the ass when, when they start helping, I, you know, I get concerned about their safety, for one. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, I don't want people touching my shit. I don't want to use your shit, for sure, because mm-hmm. if if I don't have the proper tools and you ask me to come over here and work on it, it's like, what kind of crackhead do you, did you think you were hired? Yeah. There's a T-shirt that I have, or I used to have, that said, um, you know, service call, $75. If you watch, it's $100. If you help, it's $150. If I'm fixing something that you fucked up, then it's $200. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. Oh, you got to punish them. Yeah, dude. I have totally gone in. I had this guy that I was doing houses for, and uh, he's a house flipper. And every time he'd buy a house, I'd come in and do whatever work he wanted. You know, if it was rewire, then I rewire. If it's just changing light fixtures, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And he had hired some random heating and air guy to do the electrical work Uh and this dude fucked up. He was, um, he, uh, he told the project manager to fuck off because he wasn't working for him. He was working for the owner and, you know, and then he came in and cut a whole bunch of fucking wires and ran shit wrong. And, uh, they ended up firing him and having me come out. And I was like, you had fucking somebody else out here. (laughs) <laughs> don't I do your work? Why'd you have somebody else out here? <laughs> oh. And I'm like, yeah, we, you know, he did it like $5,000 cheaper or whatever the cost was. You know, I was like, well, I'm doing it hourly and it's double my hourly rate. That's and right. that's what I did. And I, you know, I made more money on that job than I would have had. I bid it because he <laughs> fucking hired somebody else to do it. And I had to fix everything. Yeah. And you don't know what the fuck you're getting involved and in all the way from the beginning to the end I was fixing shit, you know, because even after the power is on everything, then I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why isn't this working? I'd get up under the house and be like, damn, I can't believe they cut these fucking wires and shoved them under. And I had no idea that they had cut the wires, you know, (laughs) until until I had to fucking trace shit out and see why things weren't working. It's fucking just hire the right people. I have a customer that used to live by this motto. He got it from his dad. It's. And you people pay attention to this. Hire the best, pay them what they're worth, and stay the fuck out of the way. There you go. That's it. It's simple. Yeah. Go watch TV or... Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Put on some sexy lingerie and walk around or whatever. (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) Whatever it is you do normally. (laughs) No. Don't put on sexy lingerie. Not while I'm there. All right. What else you got? This is fun. It is fun. <laughs> oh, when they try to encourage me to do things, even though I just told them that it is against code, which is <laughs> against the law. Why would you want something unsafe in your fucking house? I don't know. Because they think it's cheaper or better or something. The code's about safety, man. Yeah. You know, it's not about price. It's about safety. Jesus. They do. There's this... um code about 
having light fixtures above bathtubs. From the top of the bathtub, it's supposed to be eight foot before there's a light fixture, which in most houses, a lot of houses have eight to nine foot ceilings. Yeah, so that eliminates most houses. Yeah, you got to have like a 12 foot ceiling in order to have a light fixture above your tub. You can have a recess can or recess oh, light. because it's actually higher. Because yeah. it's the height of the ceiling, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but... Yeah, you're not supposed to have a light fixture hanging. People always want chandeliers above their bathtub. And they'll be like, well, just put the wiring in and put a blank cover on it, and we'll put it in after the inspection. Fucking why? Dude, I've seen, like, glass <laughs> chandeliers over bathtubs. I'm like, hell yeah. Who the fuck is going to clean that shit? Yeah. What poor person has to fucking deal with cleaning that shit? You know, because if it was in my I wouldn't do that shit in my house because I'm the one who has to clean it. Right. You know? Fucking people, dude. Fucking people. Fucking people. All right. Um. Oh, this is a good one. I've been. I've experienced this one. When they know I have to work in an area, um, or move tools through an area, but they leave their Lamborghinis and expensive furniture in the way. Yep. I've totally had to carry ladders past people's Lamborghinis. I believe I've been like, that. why the fuck is this even anywhere near me? You did that shit a couple weeks ago. You uh, had to carry a ladder between this dude's mm -hmm. 2018 Corvette and his wife's fucking BMW SUV. Yeah. Stresses me the fuck out. Get that shit out of here. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, we try to be careful. Mm -hmm. But fuck, as a homeowner, you don't really know what you're getting into when you're hiring construction people. Yeah. Some of us got issues real fucking issues some of us are drunk in the morning mm -hmm. when we show up yeah you know so yeah. not us particularly but yeah some yeah, people not definitely are we are gentlemen but <laughs> and it goes beyond the vehicles i did a house not too long ago where the lady had a glass chandelier above her dining room table yeah right this dining room table number one uh the company that built it is no longer open um, the table was custom built, um, and has a cover that goes over it that looks like the table. It has like a foam cover that goes over it to protect it that actually looks like the table. Wow. It's weird. Pretty amazing. I'm sure she paid a bunch of fucking money for that table, you know? And she's like, Hey, can we just move this out of the way? Because I hate to, and I'm like, why was it? Why is it in the way? Why wasn't it moved before I even fucking got here? I gotta move this. Yeah, one fucking guy. table, and she's like, "And be careful because this happens, and this will happen where the leaf goes, and it'll come mm -hmm. apart, and you and know, scratch the and, shit out of the floor, and the floor exactly, yeah. yeah, and the fucking chandelier's already a fucking masterpiece by itself that I can't fuck up. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's putting a lot of pressure on you for like fifty dollar chandelier swap out or whatever you're doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> fucking people we should just sample that at the end of every one of them okay and this is the last one i have on the list oh good um when they let their dogs harass me <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not your favorite there have been a, a lot of houses with like a lot of different pets but the dogs is always the one the cats kind of stay out of the way um there have been birds uh like weird like flying uh rodent things you know stuff what? like that really yeah i don't know what it was it was really cute though and you know she got it out of the cage and would like hold it you know and she'd be like yeah let it you know just run around the house yeah had really big eyes i don't know what the hell it was but it was cute but the dogs i've had dogs like just come over and piss on my stuff <gasps> i've had dogs fucking bite me <laughs> oh and every fucking time they're like oh he'll lick you to death bullshit <laughs> It's still death, for one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They'll lick yeah. you to death comes right before the dog types to take a fucking piece out oh of my, my leg God. or something. What the fuck? Just fucking put your dog up. Yeah, just put your dog up. Just and, and the cats, too. You know, yeah, the cats don't bother you, but the homeowners will always say, make sure you shut the door so the cat don't get out. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that one. Put the cat in the fucking bathroom or something, you know, or in a closet. I don't give a fuck. But why do I have to be responsible for where the fuck your cat is? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I have a, uh, I, I have a client. I haven't talked to her in a while, um, but she has a lot of cats. She lives in a small place. 
I don't know how many cats she has uh-huh. because I've never been able to count them all. But there are a lot of cats, like more cats, in my opinion, as a cat owner, than should be in that small space. <laughs> okay. So when you open the door, <laughs> cat lady, they want to leave. I think because there's not enough space in them for in there for them to all have their appropriate amount of territory. Because cats are really territorial. Oh, they're oh, like, well, I'm gonna go. Yeah. If I get out this door, there's no telling how much territory I could have out there. Yeah. And she, huh. you know, she would try and rustle them, but there were so many she couldn't rustle them Damn. all into one room. So there'd always be a few stragglers trying to break free. Oh my god! You know, and she loves her cats. And yeah, I would feel terrible if her cat ran off, but I would also feel kind of like, you go, be free, <laughs> be free, little it, brother. It's a whole open world out there for you. Yeah, it gets <laughs> fucking run over as soon as it leaves the driveway because it's never been outside. Fucking hawk oh, comes down god. and gets it. <laughs> oh shit! Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know, like being licked to death. Dogs no. have dogs have on the job probably never bothered me themselves, other than like being. I have had them right under my feet and uh, sniffing around trying to take my tools. I think I've had one run off with a screwdriver before. Yeah. Uh, you know that kind of stuff and um. But I've never had all that shit. Like, I've never had one piss on my stuff. I've never had one bite me that I can recall. Right on my tool bag. The worst thing is going into a homeowner's, going into a house, and uh, and you know as soon as they open the door that they have pets because of the smell. And I have, hey, I got a dog. You do. And she shits in the house occasionally. I clean it up, I clean the spot, all is good. I don't think you can smell like the ammonia y smell that a lot of I'll just say cat owners. It's have. usually cats, yeah. Yeah. Cat owners have them. I went into a house one time to fix a guy's range receptacle, and the whole time I was in his house, I just had to put my shirt over my face because I I was gonna I couldn't stand yeah. the smell in his house. It was so bad and I tasted it the rest of the day after i left yeah it's like in the air it was on my clothes it's in my mustache beard shit it's in my mouth i can it's (laughs) and believe me people you can have animals and not have the fucking smell of animals animal feces and urine in your house you can i've been over your house i have not noticed that there's a dog smell yeah my dog started stinking up the house before she died because her body yeah. Oh, she she stunk. Yeah. Yeah. Her body smelled really gross because yeah. it smelled like she smelled like death. Oh, that reminds me. I got to give Sophie a bath. A bath. I haven't bathed her since she got uh, spayed last month. Oh yeah. So she probably needs a bath. Yeah. She probably likes baths. Dogs like that kind of shit. Don't she they? likes to get in the shower and yeah. I'd I'd put her in the shower with me so I can wash her while I'm washing and yeah, it's, it, it works it's out easier. Usually. That way. I can keep an eye on her. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah. You're going to get wet anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for real. I might as well be getting clean while I'm yeah. cleaning her. Yeah, I used to have to do that with Anya. Like, I would try and wash her in the tub. Yeah. But then she shakes, and I get all wet. So I'm just like, you know right. what? I'm, we're, we're doing this together, you know? <laughs> yeah. A little flea shampoo's not going to hurt me. Yeah, it's all good. So is that it? Is yeah, that, that was, what we got? That was my list. You That's got pretty fucking good. Uh, you know what? I think you covered a lot of it. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. The fucking YouTube, the haggling, the prices, the, you know, when they, when they're like telling you, oh, look over here on this far wall, there's a receptacle. So you should be able to add a light real easy. You know, I've had, um, I've had that, you know, t- people telling me how easy my job is. Yeah. I think that's kind of relatable to the YouTube videos because they watch videos. They think it's easy. But also just, you know, because there happens to be electricity somewhere in the room, I should be able to magically put it on the ceiling, you yes. know? So uh, people don't get it all the time. That is a technology they're working on, I bet. In fact, I'm pretty sure they are working on I that. Wish like a paint. You just paint it on the walls and the ceilings. Mm-hmm. And then it's you can just run like a some kind of coding information through it. And you can have a light anywhere you want. There's a guy that owns a tattoo shop here in Columbia and um he is he's like 
a little awkward. I would say he's kind of like you, not awkward, but he has like um, all of these theories and he uh, buys into a lot of sci-fi stuff. Am I tattoo guy? Nope. Okay, but he's he like owns that, that shop though. He owns oh, okay. that shop. <laughs> um, right. So he uh, he has this thing about the EMFs, the electromagnetic fields, and yeah. how they're like infiltrating our homes and stuff. And he found this paint that he can paint the walls with, the exterior walls of his house with, and it grounds. So the paint is grounded, and it helps to keep out EMFs. Does it make his home like a Faraday box? So it's called a Faraday know. box. I don't know what that means. Uh, it's like a container that protects stuff from EMF blasts. So, like, if you have like a laptop and you put it inside this container, and there's a bomb, nuclear weapon goes off, it kills all the electronics, right? Like an EMP or an EMP. Mm-hmm. But if it's in that container, it's protected from it. Shit, I've never heard of that. Oh. Maybe believe, that's maybe that's what it does. Yeah, I believe a microwave is actually one of those things. He um throw your actually, electronics in the microwave. He changed his he changed his tattoo equipment because of the little EMF reader that he has. He saw that his um, well, the, it's electrical. Yeah. yeah, and it's a motor, so it's yeah. definitely it's got magnets in it. So yeah, <laughs> it's definitely gonna do that. Do something. So I think he got a rotary device instead of the electric motor device. You like get that from the Amish or something? No, no. People use those. They're really quiet, and uh, people will use them for like line work. Um, with like tattoo artists, they'll use those machines for the line work, and then use the electric motor for the um. I like the, the idea of it being quiet. I really dislike the sound of a tattoo gun. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you can feel it through your bones. <laughs> you can, yeah, you feel it in your nerves and shit when they hit them. Yeah, like they're not even like near my hand, and my hands like doing weird shit. Crazy. Yeah. So, um, so that's it then. I don't, I don't have anything else. I mean, I could probably think of a million things that customers do that piss me off. Fucking hate people. <laughs> and if you're a customer, I'm sorry. I love you. Don't forget to call Wood Electric for all your electrical needs. <laughs> this doesn't apply to my customers. I really don't think it's a, you know, like an intentional every time. Sometimes it does feel intentionally irritating. Bro, we were at this house last week. Well, I went back to her house last week. You and I went there. It may have been last week or the week before, but the lady just complained all fucking day about every fucking thing. Nice. I love that. I, I think that's intentional. And then she goes, well, you, Morgan, you're just going to think I complain about everything, aren't you? Like, <laughs> What? No, I don't think that. Yeah, I totally fucking think that. Shut the fuck up. Like, why are you even in here while we're trying to work? Go away. Sorry. I wish you would have said that. <laughs> Give me a heads up. I'll get my phone out before you start doing it. I'm usually nice to clients. So like the ultimate customer would be like um, like some kind of hag wearing like a dominatrix outfit. What? With like rabid dogs watching youtube and they have like a lot of salesman experience and weirdly (laughs) specific needs oh and their house is full of lamborghinis (laughs) the house is a lamborghini yeah (laughs) all right uh you want to plug anything before we call it um yeah yeah i have uh an instagram joseph t antonio um I've been obsessing over Sophia Loren lately. I mean, actually, it's not. Just <laughs> yeah, that lately. shit's great. I love those fucking pictures. But I've, you know, I've been wanting a little more Sophia Loren in my life. Uh, just look her up if you don't know what Sophia Loren is about. Uh, then I have a a YouTube that I've been neglecting called Winding Sheet. It's, you know, I think it's mostly just me reciting poetry, Edgar Allan Poe poetry. Mm. I think that's the meat of what's going on there now. All right, and then. Um, if you're a customer, there's jeptalion13 at gmail.com for all your hate mail. <laughs> also, also, I want to say for the um for the emails, guys, hit us up with uh with some topic some topics that maybe you want to hear. Um, or if you guys have some information about one of the topics that we've done and you want to correct us or add to it, please shoot us an email because we are looking forward to that shit. 
Yeah, or, yeah, you got a weird conspiracy theory. I wouldn't mind hearing that. Yeah. Yeah, a strange picture would be cool. Yeah, please don't send nudes. I don't care who you are. Please don't send us nudes. Oh, no, we could just get those on the internet. We don't need the, We don't need extras. Yeah. We can get pictures of your mom on the internet. Oh. You have to send them to us. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> Japtalion13, or uh, Japtalion in this guy also has uh, an Instagram, a Facebook, a YouTube uh, all with that name, Japtalion in the Sky. And you can also find us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, pretty much all the shit. Yeah, Stitcher, everywhere. Yeah, you guys can find us at your probably at your podcast selection. Yeah. Wherever you listen to your podcast, we're probably there. Yeah, and if it's not at the first one, go look at the second one. Yeah, go look at your next one. Go Anyways. Look at your mom. Oh, my mom? No, no. I, your mom's a saint. Um, uh, I she didn't. I didn't have to. Not go, re- that shit doesn't register with me. I didn't me, have I'm to sorry. grow up with her. She's yeah. a saint to me because she makes really good cookies. Oh, okay, she does. She bakes the best cookies, actually. Yeah, they are really good. Sorry, mom. <laughs> My yeah. mom also makes good cookies. I'm not. I'm not gonna <laughs> plug anything. I got a YouTube Wood Electric 81. Uh, I just said I'm not going to plug anything, and then Ooh. I go right into a plug. Liar! <laughs> Wood Electric 81, that's where I have your um, electrical... No, that's not where I have your electrical stuff. That's where I have uh, videos of me and my kids being crazy. Um, uh, at Wood Electric, that YouTube channel, two words, Wood Electric, you can find electrical tips and uh, how-tos and also like tool demonstrations. So check me out. Uh, If you subscribe, I'll start posting more videos, but whatever. Yeah, we do all like attention. Yeah. And and when you go to Japtalion and this guy, our YouTube channel, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. You know, that way you're sure to receive a notification every time we upload a new podcast. Yeah, leave a comment, stuff like that. Yeah, leave comments. Have arguments. Yeah, fight with each other about stuff. Hell oh, yeah. Be nice. I love that. I got that going on on my Facebook right now. It's I hilarious. like watching other people fight. All right, guys. Have a good evening. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say. Oh. Oh, our shout out for the week. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. This is uh, Brandy, right? Brandy. Yeah, it's coming from um, Brandy, my girlfriend. She donated these wonderful coasters. They're wood. They're beautiful. Yep. We love them. We love them. I love them. I love it mostly because it's wood. I really like wood. Thanks, Brandy. Yeah, good job. You're a great girlfriend. You're my new best friend. All right, guys. Have a good night. A good morning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck am I? Yeah. A good morning or a good whatever the fuck. <laughs>